Hi, welcome back to another video by Daniel and John and like we said before Discovery 2's just keep on giving so we've got a leaky fuel regulator it's down there you can see it it's leaking you can see that red stuff there's been a previous repair there now if you look under these I know these vehicles lose a bit of oil and they have the odd leak this is 20 years old if you've got a big leak uh, it's basically the fuel coming from here running over the engine and picking all the muck up and it looks like oil but it is actually this another sign of this is when you start your car up you get the black smoke sometimes a bit of a puff so uh, not the uh, red devils but discovery devils and basically we've got to take this apart and put the new kit in which we've got here and that for anybody we can help that's the code and that's from JG S4. Yeah. So we'll show you what you we'll show you what you get in the kit. Like the box. And in that box is the regulator stroke diaphragm. There. Now if you see on the end there, there's like a rubber o-ring. When you take the old one out, just make sure you've got that out with the hole in there. There's a mesh, like a mesh filter in there as well, that needs to come out and look after that well. You get two different gaskets, um, depending on what how many pipes you've got and what model it is. Some of them do have 10p yeah. and 15p. Yeah. Some of them have three pipes, some have two. I think we've got three on this one, which apparently makes it a little bit more awkward. So we've got three pipes, and there's also a fuel uh, and pressure sensor as well hooked up to it as well. And you get also, which is obviously really important, are your replacement O rings. There's four little now green O-rings. The green for a reason. I guess it's a higher quality O-ring. Fuel resistant or something. Yeah, that's what it would be. Um, I've read, I don't know how true it is, and I've done a fair bit of reading, or, you know, trying to get some knowledge about these vehicles, that these should be replaced every five years. Um, what I would suggest you do, if it needs replacing, do it properly, um, because clearly this repair down there has failed. Do you want to get the torch on that? Yeah, it's a bit dark. You can see it's failed. You can see it all there as well, the leak. Yeah. Um, I think it's just got to be done properly. Anything you do in this vehicle, you've got to just get the parts and do it properly. Um, I guess if you're out, you know, you're out somewhere and something goes, you know, you can see this stuff here that's it's been fixed with. There's been another <coughs> sort of gasket repair there that's held so um, yeah so then our, our first step with this is to clean it um, so when we take it apart we haven't got anything falling anywhere near the fuel system and then um, we'll access it and we'll come back to you but so what are you doing with the steam cleaner because you've decided to clean the air up before right. just to get rid of some of the crap on it so the only steam cleaner we've got is a little pulty thing pulty little thing there that Alright, so and it is handy. It doesn't matter steam what one is you steam. have, but to be honest, you can use any. Yeah, so all I'm doing is just getting rid of the residue of diesel and crap around there, aren't you? So you can see just a bit blasting it. And you need to really run this first bit. It's quite powerful. Though. I'm sure at this point somebody thinks the vehicle is on fire. <laughs> Wait, I mean, you never know with this. Right, look, see, see how much that's cleaned that up. It's done quite well. Get that right now. So you can yeah. see though, because there's there's, three, there's some bolts on it, isn't there? I think there's three or right. two or three at the top and one at the bottom. Oh, there's you can see the two bolts. Try and point them. There's one there. There's one there. And then apparently there's this real awkward one at the bottom. We might be able to get to that underneath though, might we? Underneath, um, but I'm sure we'll work a way out of it. The problem with doing stuff on this side of the vehicle is this inlet manifold is cast out inlet manifold is just massive and it's in the way. It's like when we did the starter motor, we managed to get hand down there, but it's they just do in say the way. To, if I crawl in a bit more. Yeah, I can see what they're talking about. I can see that third bolt. This is actually between that and that. 
So I reckon we can get to that. Once that's out, out the way and that pipe's out of the way, we'll be able to get to that third bolt fairly easily. I looks of it. I think it's just a matter of having to think about things really. What I might do in this bit to clean it up is just get an old toothbrush or soft brush. Yeah, nylon just to, brush. Nylon brush. You've got, yeah. Just to clean it up. Um, yeah. If it comes to it, it'll have to be the wife's toothbrush, but that is life. We need to get this back on the road. But that's where we'll start first of all. And we'll remove that clip there. It's got a clip on it. You can see that bit there. Well, on the electric sensor. Yeah, so you pull that up. And then just pull it off, yeah. And it's pull like it off. Thing, yeah. Um, that's got to be replaced because we've got a new one of them and then there's O-rings inside. I don't think it's a difficult job. I think you just have to be uh, very pragmatic with you it. You have to be careful with the connections. Yeah, and just do it right. And we'll have to clean all the faces up that it joins to and put the new gasket on. Looks like it hasn't got the proper gasket on, if I'm honest, but... Sometimes you have to do repairs. Yeah, basically, basically, situations basically what's it. happening is with, it's leaking anyway. And what's happening is we're getting oil underneath the car. But it's not oil. It's just the, the grime and stuff of how old the vehicle is. It just the diesel comes comes down. Just it's almost like a solvent. It cleans it and it drips with it. To the extent that it's um, been noted on OMT that it's got an oil leak. I'm fairly sure it's got one or two little dribbles. But and the other th classic sign is it goes over the starter motor and. I think over the starter motor area. Yeah, so that's, that's and not it good. Is, and it, it gets is, in there, yeah. It is over it. I can see it's over it when I look up. Yeah, so, the starter um, motor is um, down here somewhere because we've done that. Um, it's, it's basically just down there. Yeah, shame we didn't do a video on that one, but that was... No, we did do a video on the starter motor when we changed it, yeah. Uh, we did the alternator, which is The front. alternator is down here, but obviously... That was a... Yeah, devil, devil of a do as well, but um, there you go. Right, so we'll, we'll film this video in stages and we'll come back to you. So we need to clean this up a bit more and then remove a couple of bits here, I think you said. Yeah. And then we'll we'll film it in stages. And let you know... Uh, any problems we run into. Where we went wrong, uh, any problems we had, um, and whatever. And any difficulties we experienced, hopefully, to help other people along a bit. Anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, so after cleaning it up, the first thing we we we've we've decided to remove is the sensor wire, and it's just like a, a multi plug that goes on it, and there's a little uh, metal bracket that goes either side. And if you use a tool just, like this, yeah. and you put it down there in and hook up, it'll come off. It's this we're talking about. That thing there. Like retain the spring. Little retaining thing, and then just implies just to pull it off. So. Yeah. So that was how to get that out easily. And the next thing, the next things we need to get off is these pipe connections. Okay, so John is now going to remove this bracket. It has these little two 10 mil bolts on. So do you want to point to them? There and there. It holds the holds a fuel line connection onto it. I can't remember. I think that's the return, which allows me then to get to this line. to undo it. Yeah, basically. And there's two little 10 mil bolts on that. We'll remove that. I will slacken both bolts off first, just in case I can't get one out. Yeah. There's no point going ahead if you can't get them both out. So the first pipe we've removed from the top of the regulator is this fuel line here, rubber one. It's a, this one here. It's a 14 mil spanner. Okay, um, we tried a longer spanner, but you need a short little stubby one. So, so you might be able to crack it with the long one and use the short stubby one to just get it out and you can twist it off with your hands. And we've just put it up here on a cable tie. It's important to note, green O-ring. Note that, so that, that will need replacing. As we said, we removed the top pipe, but we also need to remove that bottom pipe as well, on that hose, see that one right down there, but above it is a 10 mil bolt. So we need to get a spanner on the bottom bomb, but we can't because of the 10 mil bolt above it. So we tried to, have, we tried to get a spanner on there. You have, the access isn't very good, so we're just gonna show you well, how you can do it. How we did it. So we used a very small quarter inch uh, extendable breaker bar, a four inch extension, a 10 mil socket. And what we did, we, I'll try and hold the, we came in here next to the, that fuel line, we came underneath it and up to, up to the bolt. So thread it through. You've got to have it on there square, that's the only thing though. Being clumsy I, I actually took it off. It's the other side of it. You see what? I'm, I just need to. There's a bit of wobbling about here. So just fit it through there. Yeah. We've got it on square. 
And the reason why we've done it this way is because you need to crack crack the bolt. You need some leverage on it. And, and you can't fit a breaker bar in this area, but you could fit one on here on an extension. Yeah, if you look where it is, it's here. It's, it's uh, this far back, virtually next to the yeah. uh, coolant reservoir. So but once you've cracked it, then you can use a small socket on it or a small And you won't get that many goes on this nut yeah. uh, without rounding it off, yeah. and that would be a nightmare for you. Yeah. So that's us. We did give it a bit of a crack and some penetrating stuff, didn't we, as well? Yeah, so we're going to remove we're going to remove that, and then we're then going to take out the bottom... Uh, Hose, which I just was talking about. Yeah. So we've got the um, bottom barb line off here. This one. We'll just put it there for the moment. And the the fuel pressure sensor is um, a 19. Yeah. And you have and to turn you your spanner the wrong way. Yeah. That way, like that. Take it off. The wrong way. That'd be the normal way. That's the wrong way. But that's the only way it fits in there. So take that out first. Okay, so there's some bolts you need to remove. It's that one there, and one where this socket is. Can you I don't know if you can see that? But hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, uh, it's actually wherever this socket is here. You can just see it. You can, so you can just yeah. see it there. See? Yeah. There we go. That's the other bolt you need to remove. That's the difficult one, real difficult. It's very difficult and I've got it down there, let's see. That's got to come off, hasn't it? We decided that. So the, the fuel regulator is out and this is what it looks like. There's three bolts. We was a little bit confused where things were. I think it goes something like that in the engine. So bolt there, bolt there, bolt on the bottom. Very difficult to get to. This is the filter, the, the, the gasket, sorry, but it's had some other gasket. I call them up there, that's not us doing it. But look, this is when somebody's used a, some of this gasket, but it's done to it. It's actually inside, gonna yeah. fall to bits. So, right, so we'll, we'll come, come back, back to you, to you when we've done, we've removed a couple of bits. Hi, welcome back. So, uh, the fuel pressure regulator, regulator is out of the vehicle. At last, I've got to say it was an absolute struggle. It really was. So we've got it inside. Um, we've undone these now. These take a these barbs, barbs where the push fit hoses go yeah, to. They take 14 mil spanner. I have put a bit of thing just to loosen them up. These were tight. As you can see there, this one's not too bad, but it's it's time to replace so it. Got the green o-rings that are included yeah. in the replacement pack. I'll put a link in the description to those as well. There's the other one. That's the same, but that one's mashed, isn't That's it? That's smashed. Um, well, just as we see it and what we find, so we've taken ours off, but what we did find was a lot of, um, some red gasket had been used. Um, what we've also found is that that is there, I don't know if you can see it, it's quite scored and marked now. It's quite deep. So, um, We've been given a bit of a tip, so let me just show you the tip we've been given. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to lap the lap this surface with some fine grit sandpaper on a level surface and a little bit of oil. Yeah. Um, so I've got to try and get these marks out of here because it is a bimetallic gasket. Four hundred, and I've got going up a little bit, and going down so fine the sandpaper. Yeah. And this is the tip that I've been given. You may or you may need not need to do this. It just depends if there's any. You don't want any deep lines in this or anything. You want it to be perfectly smooth. And we also was given the tip that on the engine itself, uh, you can use like a scotch pad, very light scotch pad, and just clean that off. So these both of these surfaces, this part on the regulator and on the on the block, um, obviously the gasket sandwiches in between each other with the three bolts. Big up 10 mil bolts with the 8 mil thread. Um, it needs to be perfectly sort of flat or as flat as you can get it and as clean as you can get it as well. Now I just want to show you guys something because when you've got the this off left in the engine with this way facing you is this mesh to talk about. It's like a little metallic -y mesh that mesh, is in yeah. there you can't see it, but it is in there and then with that and in front of that is, is 
little O ring, isn't it? A little black O ring. O ring, yeah. Which is there. So that, that slides just that in, into it? the yeah. engine and then that sits on front, gets pressed home. Yeah. That looks as the day. That's a little day up basically. Yeah. So we got those out with a little pick. Yeah. Well, in fact, um, we were helped get them out with a little pick. So um, somebody had smaller hands and a bit more dexterity than us. So we're going to, obviously we've got to also replace the regulator here as well. Um, That's that what was, you were met with. Yeah. We've got um, new gaskets. When you buy this kit, they will supply you with two different gaskets. Obviously, to, for the different regulators, there are different ones. You different need engines. to hang on to that. That's the temperature sensor, or you could buy a new one. We'll yeah. probably just refit that because it's working. Shall I get the box and show people what they're getting repaired kit? Yeah. So, as I was saying, um, also you need to replace this part, the regulator. This comes out of a big circlip. So, you get you one, some circlip parts. Get one of those. And that's, yep, yeah, as John says. You get one of those and this is what it looks like. Well, it looks identical. So. Some of these have vacuum lines on them. Ours doesn't. This is what it this is what it looks like. Just for reference. O-ring, sort of filter washer, little O-ring. Okay. You get um, new gaskets. You get two types depending on what sort of engine you've got. I think we got. may have shown this already actually yeah, in the first part, but we'll show it again. Over. And you get the... Um, Four O-rings. Four green O-rings, which are for the the barbs. There are there, and there are obviously one going. You know the flexi one on the on the top coming from the push fit. Yeah. yeah. So you you get your place, and I'm sure this was about seventeen pound from. Is it G? JGS. JGS. Be about a little bit more than that. But yeah. So it's all there. So. Um, when we took our the temperature out, sensor, it'd been on there quite a while. And it has a little clip. Excuse the hands, but we're just coming from cold. It is cold out there today. And that fits. We'll work it out again. There's a mop, there's a mop, there's a black multi plug that goes on to yeah. this, and then this thing fits in as like a retainer. But you push that in, it doesn't yeah. pull out. We pull it goes, it out. It goes like like that basically. But you're it supposed to up. push it down or in, yeah. whatever works for yeah. you. We pulled ours out with a pick in the eggs, yeah. it was just stuck on there solid. Um, so we're going to try and get rid of those grooves there and that's probably because somebody's tried to obviously pry it off. Um, we didn't remove the manifold. Yeah, we didn't remove the inlet manifold. We might do. We might and, do get it back and I've in. got a sneaky feeling the reason some of these repairs fail, as this one has, is although our bolts was difficult to get at the two most awkward ones two of them weren't that tight and i'm wondering if people just can't get the access they're going oh we'll just put some some of that on there and uh, that will seal any gaps but we've been lucky with this because some of this was hanging in some of these recesses yeah some of the actually as john says some of some of this gasket whatever, whatever gasket it is um it was actually in here so it's a good job that didn't actually get into these the, it didn't actually block that little um, round filter out which goes all the way in with the O-ring and front. Yeah, I guess. So we've got the regulator removed, the old regulator. That's some comparison between the old regulator and the new one. And as you can see, it's pretty dirty. And uh, even some of that gasket has got in there as well. And that's what it looks, that's what it looks like. And there it sits in there. That's why you've obviously got your Euro ring on the top. It sits in there. And all I did was um, literally add some water, pump fires, and to remove it, I just did that. Anything that grips and just pulled it out. So that would just might be helpful to somebody. Um, when pulling it out, before pulling it out, there was a circle clip on top, and you will need a set of these circle clip pliers. You can get ones <coughs> like this, or you can get ones without the adjustable bits. And basically, but you cleaned out, you cleaned around the circle yeah, first. Yeah, that didn't sits you? in there. 
and that's on there and that keeps that in there from moving and you just squeeze them together. Just, just, spring just a bit, be careful, careful. Them, so they do tend to spring yeah. out. Okay, so the fuel the fuel regulator is off. So that's what it looks like, the mating surface. There's, this, there's a bolt bolt up the top, left, top, right, and right in the bottom there is. See? And in the middle there's that round piece of mesh with an O-ring in front of it. And this is what those O-rings are? Yeah. If anybody wants to know. That's the part number from them. You must put a new one in. Yeah. This bolt on the left, I think we said in the, in the first bit of the video, this is for the inlet manifold, this bolt. So you don't need to remove that. You just want to remove the inlet manifold off. So that's what it looks like there. So we're going to refit it, then we're going to do the bleeding sequence. I'm just about to refit this uh, fuel regulator. I just noticed something with the old gasket which came off this housing and we're looking at a new one and we, we thought we thought this one was the right gasket like the one that was on it but it's not so the new kit is supplied with two of these this was the old one which came off which is identical to this one mm. but when you look you've got this sort of uh, banana shape, shape thing. and then the actual gasket that should be on, if you look at this, this has got the banana shape. So the actual gasket that should be on it is this one. So, so it seals all the way around. Yeah. So if I pull it away there, you can see it. So this is the correct gasket. This is a three pipe one. This is a 2002 Discovery. So just a word of warning, just make sure you've got your right gasket on. And it is, I don't know what the other two points, but if you have got that banana shape, then you need a banana shape imprint gasket there. So if you show them what this one looks like on there, there's a massive gap basically, which would cause it to leak. So, just yeah, just give us a second just to wipe this out. I'll get there in the end. Yeah. It's early Sunday morning. No, it's not even that No, early. it was that one, I think. Oh, it is that one, yeah. So then you've got, so here, here you've then got this. Sorry, go on. It's so there. You've got this massive gap here. So obviously that's not the right one, but that that other one fits perfectly. It's never gonna it's work, a, is it? No, it's a massive gap underneath. Yeah, even if you do that, or no, that. That's, I think that's it there, yeah. Or that, there we go. That's, that's how it should go, if, yeah. if it fitted there. You've got all this underneath, sort of underneath, that isn't sealed. See where you've got the banana shape, see underneath? There. And that's where it's leaking yeah. from. It's leaking from the bottom. Yeah. From the oh, from here. So okay. So now we know that. Without now. running on, just check you've got the right check gasket got on there. Check you're using this. If it looks like that, check you're using this one. The other interesting thing I have read on um, some forum posts as well that people have had these fitted by third parties and they've still got the leak. Right, so the fuel system's been bled. Followed the procedure as per the part I just showed you. And it's all back in. Um, and there's no leaks on it whatsoever. When, when we bled the fuel system, it uh, took three or four bleed sequences and the ECU, the engine management light was flashing. So just let it do that, it'll stop, then follow the previous part of this video. And as it's in there, no leaks whatsoever. Watch him.